What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Dirt Castle for the next episode of Sid Meier's Pirates. In the previous episode we had gotten some stuff done. We had sailed around the main pretty heavily. We were focusing on making Governor's Daughters happy and then additionally getting ready for fighting Montalban because we had figured out exactly where he was at by using clues that were given to us earlier in the game. For now what we need to do is focus on getting enough money to support an army of about 200 men. We'll go ahead and attack his fort once we have that and I think we should be alright once we can hit those numbers. And the key to doing that is going to be to capture Mr. Shawshank. So let's go ahead and take care of him. Oh, I did Cutlass on accident. My mistake. Yeah, our dueling's definitely getting slower. I don't see us having the beard or anything on our face yet. You start to get a beard after a little while. Your character grows a beard anyways. But we're not growing it yet. Wow, he is just dodging us like crazy. Alright, I'm about to build up some advantage. Hold on. So essentially what I need to do now is because I'm getting older, I've got to sit here and dodge a whole bunch. And as I dodge, he'll get slower and slower and slower. And that means I should be able to take him out eventually, but... There we are. Yeah, he's definitely got us. It's also partially a function of me using the cutlass, but not much I can do about it. I misclicked, so we'll make do with what we have. He wants to give us a signaling mirror. Nah, stand trial. I'd rather have the 4,000 gold. We'll talk to the governor. And so, Marquis Mildew, I was so hoping you would return. However, your generous gift has come to the attention of my fiancé, a very jealous senior lieutenant. In fact, he has challenged you to a duel upon your next visit. Okay. And then we have a... Let's see here. The offer will be carried. It's an order of peace. I don't really care about that. Peace does not benefit me at all. As a pirate, peace goes expressly against all of the things that make me more wealthy. It's like being an arms dealer. Peace does not work for me. Let's go ahead and we'll fight her suitor because we need to get married. And this is one of the best ways to do it. So we'll just flip a Yui right there. Okay, and Arki Mildew, I knew that your courage would not desert you. My jealous fiancé awaits you by the fountain. I pray no harm will come to you. Well, we are fighting with swords, so that's always a possibility. Have no fear, madam. I will deal with him quickly. Thumb to the chest. We'll go with the rapier here. Yeah, we're definitely slowing down. Our dodge speed still seems okay, but the, the speed at which I counterattack, it feels like it's got a delay now. And so I believe you have a grandfather, and he's with Baron Raimondo, obviously. He's on the mech. Okay, so they're going to Kumana. And so there's a peace treaty going out. I don't really care about that. I think we get married next, actually. I'm pretty sure if I look at my status. Oh, no, rocks! Yeah! That does not rock. Okay. So if I look at my status, I'm pretty sure we're really, really close to... Oh no, that's right, she gets kidnapped or something like that next. That's what it is. The next time we come back into port, she'll have been kidnapped and we have to go rescue her from Montel Bon or from somebody. I don't remember who. So the final thing we're going to do is we're going to go get Henry Morgan's treasure. That's the next thing. And if we have Henry Morgan's treasure, we should be able to get ourselves up and over 200 crew. It should work out pretty well for us. We've got enough pieces right now to where it says that we have to go to Bloodhead, which is right near Cartagena. And so if we go down there, Cartagena, or however you want to say it, I don't really care. It doesn't bother me one way or the other, although it does seem to bother people from down in that vicinity. So I'm sorry for my mispronunciations. It is what it is. Let me get a better line drawn right here because that wind is not benefiting us. Every time. Every time. I think the game seriously does look at the direction you're going and it shifts the wind out of your favor. On purpose because it's like you never see a northward wind in this game ever until you're actually trying to go northward and you're like damn it damn it all to hell makes me upset I really really dislike the wind we should also probably sue for amnesty right about now we don't have a whole lot of choices right there we're gonna have to there's some pirate raiders right there I was gonna say did we miss a pirate no I think we got them all I'm just getting paranoid and greedy in my old age I need to be a little bit further we are sailing with the wind right now and we are going insanely slow for being with the wind but if we can find a... There's San Felix right there. Let's try San Felix first. Because I would really, really, really like to have Amnesty if I can get it. And it doesn't look like there's any other locations down here. So we'll stop off right there and we'll see how it goes. There is also the possibility that we may not get Amnesty. We'll get one of the other things where it's like, Oh, you need to take some herbs and some spices and some... KFC over to this place and you'd be like okay I'll be your errand boy because why not 
It honestly, we're so close with our crew right now anyways, that it might be worthwhile to just go after Montel Bond as it stands. I'd like to at least be in the position to go look for him by the end of the episode, and if we can make that work, it's going to be crazy. I mean, when you beat Montel Bond, you get 100,000 gold, you get every specialist in the game, you get Montel Bond himself as a specialist, he earns, or he offers to work for you as kind of like a manslave for the rest of his life to make up for the fact that he, like, disrespected your family or something like that. It's really, really cool, you get a lot of stuff out of it, it's great. Okay, so Brother Paolo is going to Rio de la Acha. We gotta keep an eye on Brother Paolo. So let's go ahead and take him. The game will spawn some pirates that are gonna try and beat him up along the way. Maybe. There they are. I think it's just that he was too far away. We'll go ahead and guard him for now. Even though I don't think that that ship's name was the Childhood. That doesn't seem like an incredibly like threatening pirate name. It's like the HMS Cotton Candy. <laughs> like. Um, I think there's something to be said about the fact that you don't have the most terrifying, I mean, your pirate names, you gotta make them scary, you gotta make them, it's gotta have some balls on it, you know? A pirate name, it's gotta have something that clanks. You feel me? It's gotta be like the HMS Man Wrecker, the Life Destroyer, you know? You can't have something like the Cotton Candy or the HMS Lollipop, it's just, it's not gonna work. So we'll beat up those pirates right there. In the meantime, that pinnace should arrive in Rio de la Hacha, we now have Amnesty. Which is good, good, good for us. I'm going to go to Santa Marta. We will pick up another crop of crewmen right there. We're up over 200,000 now, so we should be able to have 200 crew. And then we'll pick up some food as well while we're out here. Especially once we sell off some of these ships. So food is dirt cheap, which is nice. Let's sell the ships first. We'll figure out what we can and can't have. We'll sell that. The trade galleon might actually be of use of us of use to us if we go out because we need to have a lot of food if we're going to make it to the west coast of I'm sorry the east coast of Mexico we do have amnesty which means we can stop off whatever we want let's go to the tavern we'll check one more time there's Henry Morgan's treasure we didn't really need that piece but I'll buy it nonetheless pick up a few more pirates puts us at 199 he said it to Cumana we might be able to pick him up along the way if we get lucky but I'm not going to hold out for it too long we do still need to find our grandfather. That's the last thing we need to do for our story, but... Let's head down towards Cartagena, and then once we're down there, we'll look out for Bloodhead. Lots of heads down here. Thunderhead, Bloodhead, Powderhead, Knifehead, whatever. Let's see here. Although it is interesting that it doesn't even have... It says that it's near here, but it's not really. It's way off down to the south. This should be enough treasure to put us substantially over the limit for what we need. When we go to fight with Montal Bond's fourth, the thing you want to bear in mind is that once we're there, we don't necessarily have to win the fight. All we have to do is bum rush the front door, and then we have to outduel Montal Bond. That's pretty much all there is to it. South of here, well, I'm not seeing anything that looks like Bloodhead or anything else. And we are most definitely south of Cartagena. Let's see if maybe it's down in here somewhere. It could be. No. Well, damn, maybe they weren't being... Did I miss one up in here? I thought that maybe, maybe Bloodhead's the one that's over in the corner. Either way, we need the treasure. We need the treasure very, very badly. Was that? I thought that was Thunderhead, though, or something like that. Or maybe that was Thunderhead. Oh, there it is. I went right by it. Snake would have bit me. Okay. Let's have a look here. And from Bloodhead, it's going to be south to the dead tree. And then to the west. We should get a pretty substantial... I think Henry Morgan's one of the higher-ranking pirates. So we should get something out of this that's not going to be total suckage. Let's go ahead and put into port here, or put into sand since there's no port available. We got a geyser right there. Is there a geyser anywhere on this map? There is not. Well, we put in right here, so let's go ahead and go off this way. Okay, so we've got Bloodhead right there, and so from Bloodhead, we want to go straight to the south. So 
So let's do that. We'll keep an eye out. I think we're looking for dead trees or something like that. Yeah, dead tree. And that looks like that's three dead trees, though. So I don't know if that's the same thing. It's kind of like saying we're looking for guys or like five guys. It's a very, very important distinction, especially if you're into pizza. I don't think... So many trees in the way. That I'm not even positive. So there's a... There's a... Indian totem over there. God, this thing is inland. That's always a big issue is... Is it inland? There's also an arch rock over there. The arch rock gives us a point of reference. And so I think I may make for the arch rock. Which should be next to an Inca temple or something like that. We may be able to eyeball it from the arch rock. I don't know. There it is. We got it. Oh, we are so set now. Let's do this thing. Yellow shirts, dig forth my treasure. Lift the stones and skulls. I wonder where he got those skulls from that he decorated his pirate treasure with. 10,000 gold pieces. Hell yeah. There it is. So we've got ourselves 10,000 more gold pieces. That should put us in a good place to go after Montel Bond. So I'm thinking, let's go ahead and recruit. We're going to lose some men right there. We've got the... Nah, we don't need the mysterious head. We're going to get desertions right there. So after 13 crewmen deserted. But we're at 211 and they're angry, unfortunately. They're being grumpy pantses. There we go. We just got to get them down to unhappy. Awesome. So there it is. They're down to unhappy. Let's go ahead. We're going to start heading out to Montel Bond's place. It's going to be really, really rough. I think I'm going to go ahead and we will... Let me cut it right here because I've got nothing interesting to talk about anyways while we go out to Marquis, to the Marquis hideout. And so once we get there, I think we'll make a quick jump cut and we'll be good to go. So I'll see you on the other side. What's up guys and gals? We're in Veracruz and it's time to go get Montel Bond. Let's sail on up there and do this. So there's a number of things we have to talk about about this fight that this is going to be a very, very unfair fight. This is sort of a bullshitty fight. Even just from the design, from the ground up, you're not really meant to win this fight. It's on higher difficulties, it was definitely not tuned. And so essentially we're going to find Montel Bond and this is subject to a number of things. So he's going to have 10 armies. For every 50 men you have, you get one army. You can see that we're only going to have four armies. So it's going to be four versus 10. It's almost impossible to have 500 pirates anyways. Just even if we had divided the loot like 30 seconds before, bringing 500 pirates all the way out to Veracruz, we're never going to be fighting Montel Bond on an even surface. And so I think if we had 400 men, we might be able to take him because I think he's even got more than 10 armies. It's, it's a lot. He's got a ton of armies. Additionally, they get to cheat in their deployment phase, whereas we do not. We have to deploy a Blind, and they get to deploy completely and totally knowing they get they get to deploy knowing where all of our units are which is also bullshit because we're attacking from the jungle so they should have no idea where we're at uh, there's there's a number of things here it's also subject to map RNG you might get a bad map and why does a bad map matter well with what we're doing right now there's physically no way that we're going to win this stand-up fight but there is a little bit of a backup plan. If we can get one unit through the front gate, we win by default. And so what we're going to be trying to do here is kiting our asses off while hoping that we can get one unit in the front gate. Whether or not it's going to work, I can't really tell you. There's this fort right there. It should be really easy to find. It's enormous. It's like the size of Veracruz or any of the other cities. Curacao that you might be looking for. I can't guarantee this is going to be winnable. We may pull in and we may get an impossible map where it's essentially like a bunch of rocks with one pass in the middle. And if there's one pass in the middle, there's no way for me to sneak around and kite and make it work. So we'll lose by default. If that ends up happening, well, I'll probably just cry myself to sleep or something. But you've tracked the evil Marquis Montel Bon to his fortified hideout. An army of Indian mercenaries blocks your path. And they are not kidding when they say an army. Yeah, we can't start there. That's a terrible spot. All of these spots are terrible. Wow. Okay, so... Having been given a very, very sketchy deployment... I'm gonna start from the centralized location and they just spread out. So as you can tell, this is not all the units they have. They also have a couple others that'll be hiding in forests and things. As you can tell, it's bad. We want to... 
Well, first things first. I prefer to use my officers to make the run into the middle of the enemy base. Yeah, so there's another unit over there. This may not even be possible. We'll play it out, but I'm pretty sure we got an impossible map configuration. Almost like 80% sure that we have an impossible map configuration that we can't win with the strategy that I'm thinking about employing. They just got to double move in a forest. Usually you get two moves per turn unless you move through a forest and then you get a single move. I'm not sure what the game's trying to pull right there. So yeah, those guys are going to run off into the forest right there. We've got an impossible map configuration. Oh, never mind. Those ones over there are blocked in. We may not. We may be okay. Let me turn on the grid so that I know what I'm dealing with here. Height arrangements do come into play. I didn't mean to do that. I hit the 2 key, not the 5. Unfortunately, I've got a gaming keyboard that has really incredibly sensitive keys, and so barely brushing your finger over one will cause that to happen. So that may suck for us. Yeah, they already know what we're trying to do right now. They're already weaving around to block off my officers. Damn. Okay, so... I may have to do this a little bit differently than I planned, if we can even do it at all, but I'm I'm, I'm moving towards 100% positive that it's impossible to win. So we're just going to park them in a forest. And then we'll run them away. I want these guys on high ground, so at least people are attacking upwards if they come after them. These are bowmen over here, so we should be able to take them without too many problems. And if we can route this side of the field... We will more than likely be okay. They should have the advantage hiding in the forest right there. They should be able to hold out for a little bit. I can't guarantee they'll be able to hold out for more than like one turn. But they might be able to thin out the armies a little bit. Oh yeah, so they were able to. They've got the hide advantage and they've got that leverly cover advantage. And so now they can't be shot. That's an army down. Well, our chances just went up. Not gonna lie, our chances did just go up. We want them to skip their turn. We want to draw this group of warriors away if we can. Let me have the next unit because we want to flank this. There it is. And so we got a flank attack right there. So that should be victory is absolutely a foregone conclusion right there. And let's rush the gate. That's all we can do on this side. Hopefully our captain is able to hold out for a little while longer. And if he ends up falling, what I'll do is I'll have the Buccaneers kite everybody out. Although the Buccaneers are being head off as well. Let's go ahead and skip his turn. We'll have him hang out right there. With the Buccaneers... I don't know what the right move is right here. I think I'm just going to run this way. So as to guarantee that ridiculous things don't happen. And they'll take both these groups of pirates, and hopefully we'll be able to... If we can't make it around the coast over here, that's the, the other... That's the only other problem I foresee becoming an issue. Okay, and so our Buccaneers have finally been wiped out. Which is unfortunate. But we did pretty well right there. For a fight that I thought was going to be impossible... I don't know if I should have them attack the Bowmen just in the off chance that it'll work. Eh, I mean, I guess I'll just have them... Give me the next unit. What are you doing? Next unit. Hey. There we go. Okay, so... And I don't suppose I can move through any of that. So what we'll do is we'll sacrifice them in case we need to. From that cover, he might be alright. We might be able to take it with our officers. I'll move these guys back over here, just to give them something to think about. We'll move these guys around the coast, and it looks like in two turns they'll be at the front gate. So close right now. This fight is always going to be close, though, if you're trying to do it this way. I'm just giving you a heads-up warning. It's always going to be like this. And typically, by the, if you can get a real army together to fight Montel Bon, you're already going to be too old to get anything done in the first place. That's your, that's your major, major concern. 
All right, so the turn-based fight, I mean, we still have to deal with Montel Bond, which becomes enjoyable and both terrifying and awful at the same time. Whew, pre-fight jitters going on right now. Pre-fight jitters. We got this, though. We got this. Oh, our pirates won. Holy shit. I didn't even realize that they won. Okay, let's take the gates. And there it is. You've reached the fort's gates. Now we've got to fight him with whatever, I guess. I'm going to go with the longsword, I guess. There shouldn't be any chat right here. It should just be a cutscene. And off it goes. We begin our fight. I'm going to try and just go tit for tat with him if I can. Ow, oh, my finger missed. I got jitters. Ow, oh, hell. I don't even know what happened right there. That was just all around janky. There we go. We got him. Oh, yeah! You are a master tactician, sir. Truly, I have done your family a terrible injustice. I give you 100,000 gold pieces which are rightfully yours. Among my crew are eight specialists of extraordinary skill, and henceforth they will serve you. I myself will serve as your cabin steward. And that's that. We lost a lot of crew, though. So let's return to the ship. You'll see that we got 100,000 gold. We'll go ahead and sail away, and I think that puts us just about at the end of our episode. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save you the horrific struggle of watching me sail across the ocean all the way back to the east. There's not really a whole lot left for us to accomplish in this playthrough. So what we want to do is from here on out, Montalban is no longer on the map. We want to find lost cities, we want to get rich beyond all imagining, and we want to find our grandfather. And if we can manage all of those different things before we divide the plunder, we should be in an amazing position to come into the end of this game, probably with a maximum score, which was what I was hoping. Whenever I play a game that I enjoy on the internet, I really hope, like, a game that I've got hundreds of hours and I always hope that I do reasonably well at it. Obviously, there's always going to be something that people teach you along the way that you hadn't figured out yourself because I played this game, well... I don't tend to look at walkthroughs or anything like that. That's just me personally. I almost never look at walkthroughs. I just play a game and when I learn, I learn, I learn, and I don't read forum posts or anything like that. That's probably why I never get very good at games. But I'm going to break the episode off right here. Take care out there, everybody. My name is Splattercat. Today we have done a huge deed. We've defeated Montel Bon, which it's a tough fight. It's a really, really tough fight, and I'm surprised we were able to pull it off. I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi do.